is wafer-thin wood put to use. How do forest products industries improve on nature? Why are three thin boards better than one thick one? Industry on Parade. Peabody Award winner for public service produced on film each week by the National Association of Manufacturers. Selectively cut timber on the way to the mill. To ensure a steady supply, industry has become a leader in the practice of conservation through a model reforestation program and through research and development that have squeezed the greatest possible usefulness from our forest products. Here, for example, hot type once regarded as virtually useless are stripped into long sheets of a veneer which the Crosby Forest Products Company has found ideal for the manufacture of crates. And the same basic peeling and slicing operation is the first step in the manufacture of a wide variety of wood products that didn't even exist 50 years ago. By peeling other kinds of logs, by literally unrolling them into thin strips, the mills of today obtain the ingredients from which plywood sandwiches are made, stronger than the original lumber itself, and more consistently beautiful too. That's partly because defective or imperfect sections are clipped out and eliminated by skilled workers with sharp judgment as the veneer moves on to the next step. In building up the sandwich, the direction of the grain is alternated. On one layer, it's crosswise, on the next, lengthwise, and so on, to give great strength and protection against splitting. Special cements hold the assembly together. After undergoing pressure of 150 pounds per square inch at high temperature, the permanently bonded panels are trimmed, sanded, and again graded. In this case, panels largely of redwood, produced by the M&M Woodworking Company of Portland. Birch is another of the many kinds of woods used by an industry that actually improves on nature by first taking nature's work apart, then reassembling it in a better way. Careful centering in the lathe is essential if the log is to yield the greatest possible quantity of flawless veneer. The record here at the Mellon, Wisconsin plant of the Pinocchi Veneer Company is one unbroken strip, an 85th of an inch thick and one mile long. Thicker strips like this one run about 50 feet. During World War II, birch veneer from this plant was used in place of metal on Britain's famous mosquito bombers. Today, most of it goes to furniture makers in the form of panels made of strips, welded edge to edge, to look for all the world as though they were made of many birch boards put together by a master carpenter. Industry through this process spreads the beauty and strength of a valuable log much farther at low cost, enhancing the appearance of surfaces of many kinds. Today, much of the finest furniture manufactured is largely surfaced by veneers, which have not only striking grain, but also outstanding acoustical qualities, plus figure effects that would otherwise be prohibitively expensive. But the impact of plywood and veneer on furniture manufacture is more than surface deep. By making possible mass production of curved surfaces, it has given us new freedom in design, functional as well as handsome. As furniture can be shaped, so can the wooden structural members of Navy mine sweepers when they're composed, much as plywood is, from many small pieces rather than a single large one. Wood is used in these ships not to conserve metal, but because they're mine sweepers needing protection against magnetically triggered explosives that would be touched off by the passage of large masses of iron or steel. And while wooden ships aren't exactly new, the use of laminated wood in place of the solid timbers that used to go into our wooden ships is quite different from the old technique.
Lamination is being used in boat construction and in large buildings for which this wood is being processed because it's a method that vastly increases strength. And here at Timber Structures Incorporated of Portland, Oregon, we see the reason again on a larger scale. By assembling many pieces and by cementing them together with resins even stronger than the wood itself, the company is able to produce beams that equalize the load strain along the entire length. Under great pressure, the cement will be dried in a matter of seconds by the heat of very high frequency radio waves, and the result after planing and cutting is a wooden rafter with strength that equals pound for pound the strength of steel. This is part of the main arch for a church building. Today, more than half the new churches being built in America make use of laminated wood. To see another of the many uses for laminated wood, we visit a factory in Tennessee. Here, whirling knives shape baseball bats in a matter of seconds from several layers, hickory for the handle and core, and birch for the faces and end. Again, strength is the reason. There's less danger of splitting a bat into pieces when it's made up of many pieces in the first place. As in baseball, the newest thing in bowling is also laminated wood in the place of the solid block. And the same goes for water skis. Here at Ply Curves Incorporated in Grand Rapids, Michigan, water skis are molded of marine plywood whose seven plies are bonded and bent into ski shape simultaneously on this powerful press. Electronic heat and pressure of 200 pounds per square inch cause a synthetic resin bonding agent to merge the seven plies into a unit much stronger than any board of the same thickness. And the combination will resist the moisture that would warp ordinary wood. This company was formed to supply custom molded plywood for the world famous Grand Rapids furniture industry. So water skiers benefit from the same care and craftsmanship that go into say a fine desk or chest of drawers. Here, one panel is sawed into three skis, each one free of weak spots. A comforting thought to the skier when he's clipping off the tops of waves at 50 miles an hour. The remarkable plywoods, veneers, and lamination processes we know today have been developed through the years by long, painstaking industrial research in laboratories like this one, maintained by the Western Pine Association. Here and in other labs financed by individual companies and by groups of companies, new wood products and new uses for wood are constantly under study. As an example of the work in progress, a one-inch pine board squeezed in a powerful hydraulic press squeezed down to one-fourth its original thickness. Smooth and beautiful, the result is durable enough to serve as a countertop. Chemical research, too, is extremely important in this field since the various products owe their existence largely to resins used to bind the layers together. In developing these substances, firms like Reichhold Chemicals Incorporated have created new business for lumbermen and for their own industry as well. Throughout the free enterprise system, progress in one industry is linked closely with progress in another. Expansion in one field bringing expansion and prosperity in many. The growing business in pre-cut factory assembled houses is but one of many that's been aided by advances in laminated wood. The big sheets make it easy to assemble wall panels on a production line. But not until the discovery of modern waterproof resins was it possible to use this kind of wood for exterior construction. When these resins became available, the demand for plywood sharply increased, and so did efficiency in the production of factory-built houses. Now, a single piece forms the skin of an entire panel, in which a window area can be opened in a matter of seconds. National Homes Corporation operates like this through most of the year, turning out the components of a whole house every seven minutes. A 
window frame is set in place as the installation of inner sheathing continues. It's a method that doesn't leave much work to be done out at the building site. And what work does remain also may be speeded, its cost held low by laminated wood products. Mosaic floors, for example, may now be put in place quickly by simply pressing onto mastic-covered subflooring the blocks turned out by firms like Wood Mosaic Corporation. Other manufacturers have developed techniques that put the beauty of wood-paneled walls, once restricted to the very rich, within the reach of all. Here, U.S. Plywood Corporation prepares such paneling from thin sheets of exotic woods gathered all over the world, mahogany, corina, teak, rosewood, and walnut, to name a few. Each sheet is just 1 85th of an inch thick. Now a cloth backing is prepared. It's been impregnated with an adhesive that reacts to heat. And it's on this cloth that the veneer is arranged, carefully selected and matched for maximum beauty. To hold the extremely thin wood in place during the next process, they spot weld it, you might say, with hot iron before the whole sheet moves on to be welded in long, hot presses. The press will wed the wood to the cotton much as layers of plywood are bonded together. But the result will be a flexible material that can be installed in much the same manner as wallpaper. The product will be ready for shipment after additional finishing processes, ready for installation in homes and in offices everywhere. A new product created by an industry that's only 50 years old. It started with the desire to get more use out of wood and the invention of plywood. Then it developed the advanced techniques which now help us realize more and more the potential of one of our most valuable natural resources. American industry, builder of a better tomorrow, has presented Industry on Parade, National Association of Manufacturers. <laughs>